يشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل أقنت من لساني يفتو كوي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأنا ذلك good afternoon to all of you um, I will be presenting today a topic that is part of my thesis uh, still in progress um, well, the title is uh, The Theology of Progress an Islamic critique on the tragic spirit of modernity as you can see from the title itself, there are many big words that I need to explain beforehand. Um, I would like to prove at the end of this lecture that the idea of progress that we understood today has become part of a kind of theology. And I would give some critique based on the works an explanation of a Muslim contemporary thinker by the name of Sayyid Naqib al a Malaysian-based uh, uh, thinker, on why progress has become a problem. The idea of progress has become a problem, and it reflects a, a tragic spirit of modernity. Um, I will divide my presentation into three segments. First, I will explain the panorama of progress in the history of the West. Secondly, I will explain a bit about secularization as a philosophical concept. And thirdly, I will explain about Islamization that is, should be an answer to this devastating force of idea of progress that has been conceived in the manner or in the mode of secularization. We all know that the word progress is something very evident in the sense that things are already changing. Uh, the fact that we are here today the fact that we are wearing a western suit, the fact that we are speaking English, connotes certain progress of man uh, in embracing modernity to a certain extent. But these are facts. Progress as a fact is different from progress as an idea or as a philosophical concept that is imbued in most in the mind of modern man. I would like to argue here that whatever we have today, be it development in international politics, in economy, in science, are basically the manifestation of the realization of the idea of progress. If we were to view the panorama of progress in the history of the West, we might we were able to understand and appreciate that in the past, before the advent of enlightenment and renaissance beforehand, the idea of progress was not really in, in existence. Why I say like this? Because if you were to study the structure, the social structure of Western people, society, and the religion itself, Western Society was very much a stable society. In a sense, they are bounded by certain order. Traditional societies before modern age was bounded, were bounded by certain order. And in the West, in the Christendom particularly, we have this called the idea, the great chain of being. Uh, the great chain of being explained that Every man are being positioned in certain place. For example, if you were born as a peasant, you were not able to be a knight or a king. If you are born as a baron, you can be a baron, but to go beyond, uh, lower than that is quite impossible. Meaning that there are certain hierarchies of existence, physical existence, I would say, or social order. So, social mobility is almost impossible 
in the history of Western people. Not like Muslim. I mean, we are a bit egalitarian, although we do have some orders, but, but we are being positioned according to our, for example, knowledge, and also, uh, but you can progress. I mean, if you are born as an Indian, or as a, as a Turkish, as a uh, Persian, if you are good, you can be a scholar of Islam. Like Al-Ghazali for that matter, he's a Persian. Many people confuse, I mean, thought that when you say ulama, it must, they must be Arabs. But in the history of Islam, through knowledge, people can progress in the in societal level. So, the idea of progress is not manifest, uh, was not manifested in the, in the social structure of Western people. Also, in the thinking of, on, in the theology of, of Western people, during the heyday of the Catholic Church, progress does not, is, was not being manifested in a sense because there was a bigger idea on top of it. And it is called providence. Providence. Divine providence to be exact. Meaning that all creatures in this planet are being ordered and being given certain due measure of their existence and their destiny. Hence, Western people are bounded by this idea of the providence. That's why perhaps they are not as challenging as the modern people and hence maybe due to that kind of understanding uh, the phenomena such as colonialism, industrial uh, revolution could not come into being in the early stage of Western history. This change happened after enlightenment. This is what I want to argue. The, the idea of progress became real once the Western society experienced a form of secularization that comes along after the advent of enlightenment. Only by eradicating or uh, sidelining the role of religion in their life, Western men able to understand or embrace the idea of progress. Since I argue just now that the idea of progress does, does not exist, and it doesn't exist in a vacuum actually, it was incubated first, as I said, by the idea of divine providence. If you overthrow, or if you over, if you overthrow a, a, a big idea like divine providence, there must be a replacement to it. Hence, after the sidelining of Christianity in the West, Western people need to find a new spirit to shape their destiny. Because before this, you know that, like what St. Augustine said, you have clear direction that you're going to die, there will be salvation ahead. And Jesus will come, you know, this very clear idea of uh, predestination and everything, Qadr and Qadr. But since you have overthrown no side line in Christianity, you need a new narrative to inform you, to <coughs> in order to make you go uh, progress further. And this is where the idea of providence is being substituted with the idea of progress. Hence, theology is no longer uh, based on Christianity per se, but it has been uh, given new life by appropriating a secular concept, a very positivistic, uh, positivistic concept on the idea of progress. How this thing, how this came into being, it is by through the process of secularization as a philosophical program. Uh, many of us here came from uh, social science background, politics. But, uh, and we talk about secularism, secular society and everything. But according to Sayyid Nakit al the real problem that has been setting us in, in modern times is the idea of secularization as a philosophical program. We have no issue with secular state. In the past, Islam, well, our uh, government is secular in nature, meaning that they are doing secular things, governing, ordering society, building roads and, 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 and taking tax and whatsoever. But at the same time, of course, we do not separate uh, religion from our daily lives. But sec the, the, the meaning of secular is not a big problem to us. 
But the real problem is when you make secular as a philosophical program and a process that tries to uh, destabilize or relinquish the tenets of our religion, the cardinal principles of our religion. According to Alatas, he based his view uh, mostly on the explanation of a very famous Harvard theologian, still alive, Harvey Cox, in this uh, massively influential work uh, called The Secular City. Uh, according to Harvey Cox, which he cited from Cornelian van Persen, uh, a Dutch theologian, I think this is what uh, some of the best definition uh, of secularization. Uh, it is more like ta'rif bil rasab, not ta'rif bil had. Definition by explanation, which is the deliver deliverance of man first from religious and then from metaphysical control over his region, uh, reason and his language. It is the losing of the world from religious and quasi religious understandings of itself, the dispelling of all close worldviews, the breaking of all supernatural myths and sacred and sacred symbols. And also the de fatalization of, of history, which is very uh, very significant uh, meaning that is being imbued in, in theology, in Christianity, in Islam also we have, but not in the manner of the fatalize, uh, fatalization, but the terms of Qadr and Qadr, the, the idea of predestination. So once you overthrow the role of theology in explaining your future of history, man has been left with the world on his hands. That he can no longer blame fortune or the furies. Uh, uh, if you read uh, Greek mythology, there are these creatures called the furies for what he does with it. That's why after theology of Christianity being sidelined in, in the Western thought, you can see the, dev the, the, the development of uh, modern scientific thought from, uh, from René Descartes, or Baker, uh, Francis Bacon and others because there's no longer obstacles that could uh, uh, prevent you from, from inquiry beyond what has been ordered by God before because if you, in, in the past, in the medieval times if you were to uh, meddle with God's creation which is the earth, the nature then you are actually uh, some form of blasphemy you are trying to reorder what God has ordained for us. That's what hinders the spirit of scientific rationalism or the scientific thought in Western society. So, only through secularization, as argued by Cox, that the idea of progress was germinated within that philosophical progress. So this is what actually conceived, meaning that if you, when we say uh, development, when we say uh, progress, oh that man is very progressive in nature, what does that mean? That, it seems that it shows the, the meaning of progress in modern time is being imbued with certain uh, values. For example, what Fukuyama said, the end of history, how, how could he he posit a certain claim that, that the end of history will be liberal democracy and free market. What drives him or what, concept, uh, what drives him to, to, to frame in such manner the, the question of future with certainty like that? I think it has to do with the idea of progress. Because Fukuyama and certain Western thinkers view that history is a a path that, 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 that accumulates and, and, and moves forward. Whereas in Islam, we have certain uh, different views of history, of philosophy of history. For example, Ibn Khaldun is very much believed in the cyclical nature of history. So we do not believe in, 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 in a linear process, linear process of uh, uh, history. So this idea of progress after it became rooted in the Western tradition, it became one of the central 
a concept that gives meaning to many other major ideas in Western philosophy. For example, we have Hegelian idea of world spirit, but it became more influential and impactful through Marx when he inverted the, the idea of dialectics uh, into dialectical materialism, when he said that well, society will be clashed between the proletariat and also the, the bourgeoisie, and hence it will be constant uh, dialectical of, uh, uh, between synthesis uh, and antithesis, became synthesis, and hence on. But these are all the manifestation from the very idea of progress. So, this is why in the modern discourse of international relations, politics and economy, we have, for example, the idea of develop and the underdeveloped. The idea of the North versus the South. These are the manifestation of the idea of progress because we conceive progress as something secular, as something uh, peculiar to the Western people, as if those who uh, live beyond the ambit of Western civilization have not achieved progress in their historical epoch. So, this kind of ideas is quite detrimental in the sense it, it gives birth to this idea of colonialism. For example, if you know that there are certain segments in the world today who are not progress, who have not been progressing, there's a need for us, say Western people in the past, to perform what we call uh, a service of mission civilization, uh, white man's burden. These are all conceptions that, that assume the, the, uh, the Oriental as, as something static, uh, exotic, and, and non-progressive entity. Hence the need for us to come to your place, liberate you from this static and mundane life so that you be, can become like us, progress like us. So these are ideas very peculiar to secular uh, civilization like Western people. So what are the answers? Or what is the answer to confront this devastative thought? The answer would be, as we all know, as a Muslim, is Islamization. Regardless of your opinions and views, regardless of Islamization of knowledge, by the fact of being Muslim, you are doing Islamization, either on a personal level or a societal level. Because Islamization, as defined by Alatas, is the liberation of man first from magical, mythological, animistic, national, cultural tradition opposed to Islam, and then from secular control over his reason and his language. Because secularization, say Harvey Cox, conceived three types of three major components, which is the consecration of values, which is like uh, relativizing the values, the secularization of politics, this is what we have been problem now in the Muslim world, which is you desacralize politics totally, as if there's nothing to do with God and there's nothing to do with religion. You want politics to be neut uh, neutral from, from moral judgment that based on religious uh, uh, text or uh, order. And also the disenchantment of nature. Whereby, for example, how can you how can you do science, scientific works or scientific queries it, by investigating nature when you when you know that nature is full of spirits? It doesn't make sense for you to disturb the order of nature that is being imbued with spirit and the idea of divine that nature is divine, a divine manifestation of God. So for Western people, those kind of understanding were hindrance to to their development of scientific endeavor. Unless it has been secularized, we cannot do much with the nature. We just have to accept that nature is divine and it must not be dis it, will, it must not be disturbed. So Islamization is a counter philosophical force against secularization because it protects the world, nature and the man from being in, from from being influenced by the devastative force that I mentioned just now, the three uh, dimensions of secularization. So, by having, by affirming that 
Islamization as a force that could ans give a potential answer or solution to this uh, devastating idea of progress, which is the, uh, that is very tragic in nature. Uh, what should be affirmed, as being explained by my colleague just now, is on the various ground like epistemology, ontology, and the formation of the correct worldview of Islam. Ru'yatul Islam bil wujud. As uh, we know, Western philosophers have been discussing a lot about the idea of being and existence like Heidegger. And in Islam, it has been solved eons ago. I mean, years, years ago, by our mutakallimun, by our Sufis, by our philosophers, that the world is real, that realities are established, haqa'iqul asya thabita. The realities of things are established. So this kind of understanding or epistemology would not wreak havoc on our thought and our history, like what Western people constantly uh, experience. They have, for example, not, before they have this idea of medieval, and then they conceive that Renaissance and then Enlightenment, and then they there's come uh, 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 like Romanticism, and also uh, mod, the idea of modern, and then postmodern, and what's next? So for Western people, the idea of progress is always changing, always in the manner and the mode of dialectic. Sometimes modern and postmodern. And postmodern is a, a challenge or response against modernity. So this kind of thing do not exist in Islam. Because why? Because we affirm certainty and certitude in our knowledge, in the establishment of our ontology, in our, in our epistemology. We make progress in our science, in our economy, in our politics, but not in the manner like Western people, uh, Western civilization, where, whereby they conceive uh, progress must be challenging the previous order must always be in opposition to the previous order. And this is what I think if you were to read Quran, for example, and what Allah Ta'ala said, a very important verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, where God uh, gave similar to uh, on, on this tragic spirit of progress. Uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, Allah SWT uh, said, Yakadul barku yakhtafu absarahu. كُلَّمَا أَضَاءُ لَهُمْ مَشَوْ فِيهِ وَإِذَا أَظْلَمَ عَلَيْكُمْ قَامُوا وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَزَحَبَ بِسَمْعِهِمْ وَأَبْصَارِهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ The lightning all but snatches away their sight. يَكَادُ الْبَرْقُ يَحْتَفُوا يَحْتَفُوا means like in Tanzeeq, uh, you, you strip away. It's quite strange, you see, lightning, something that is very clear, you know, light should be show you the way, or make your eyes, make your vision clearer. But in, in this verse, God uh, said that lightning caused your vision, absorb, to be snatched. Only the, light, the lightning storm, uh, only thunder. Thunder. When thunder comes, right? Yes. So, yeah. you use 25 minutes. Oh, okay. Please. Okay, I wrap up. Okay. Hence, uh, God said that in this verse, I would, uh, Allah Taz mentioned in this work that it refers to this tragic spirit of Western people who who adopted secular sec, uh, secularism as part of their uh, philosophy, life philosophy, which actually will lead them, will not lead them to anywhere. Stable or certain, uh, certainty, uh, certitude. So, this kind of understanding is, as I said just now, very much detrimental. And Quran also alluded in 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 uh, in in, uh, in a verse whereby God said, "Fa'ina tadhabu," a very powerful verse to reflect the tragic story of progress. Where, whither are you going? Where are you going actually? So in the in in Western thought, in Western conception of history, conception of history, progress means you will not arrive to a certain point where you can say this is development, because in Islam we are very clear of everything is has been established by our ulama through Quran and Sunnah, uh, and hence I think the answer for modern of the problem of modernity would be to re-examine the problem of the idea of progress and 
well, for us Muslim is to Islamize those understanding, those ideas that existed in economics, in politics, in science, that progress is the devolution of man to the origin. Like what God said, Al akmatu lakum dinakum. We have completed the religion for you. There's no question about that. We have the we have a uh, our truth and realities are established. I think that's what I'm going to I mean I'm going to end here. Uh Wallahu alam bisar wa salam al kutra. Thank you very much. Is there any questions, comments, critics? I think uh, <laughs> We might say that when we removed religion from society, I mean from Western perspective, and in the realm of philosophy, we allowed free thinking. I'm talking as a Western man. So, I think you say that in your presentation, the scientific development it exploded when there was separation of religion, theological intervention in the realm of thinking. Yeah. Okay. The idea of freedom. As Descartes said, the, I think therefore I am. I mean, I must, th it, it also means I must think. I should not be uh, positioned on certain limited notions of history or notions of knowledge that we got that just been ordained by God yeah. we rather should doubt everything yeah. he said that the only thing that we should not doubt yeah. is that we are doubting <laughs> okay. yeah. so I think from religious perspective you can say that, that by secularization we allow progress in the society and yes. we move, remove religion yes. but I think my argument is that by doing that we also allow uh, new frontiers of and diverse epistemology mm -hmm. for example if they didn't if he, they didn't allow secularization today we are we couldn't be able to uh, yes. point out the very idea of Islamization and yes. everything yes. You also being involved in philosophical, intellectual uh, discussions, thinking. So I think this is also good from one perspective because we Muslim also get, I mean, get in certain grounds for that, okay. <laughs> for our intellectual development. And the, the notions of linear, linear process of history and cyclical points of history, I think I'm not quite sure that where some. Islam, what does Islam say about this? Yeah. Is it absolutely Islam says that it is cyclical or there are also notions of linear process of history? What do you think? Well, uh, to answer the first question and the first view, um, well, of course, you were describing that the diversity of ideas or thoughts is due to the, the benefit that we derive from the idea of progress or secularization. Well, that's not really a, a convincing thesis to begin with because without secularization came uh, into existence, you know. I think every civilization have their own uh, genesis of uh, this diversity of ideas. They have their own thoughts. I mean, they, 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 they have uh, progressed in their own like, tradition, like Islam, for example. We don't need the, the Greeks to tell us you need to be secularized in order for you to develop your kalam, your philosophy, your tasawwuf for that matter. Because whatever we have, we can benefit from, of course we can benefit from our decentralization and from the Greek tradition, but it doesn't mean you have to be secular to get, to reap the benefits from. For example, Al-Ghazali, he did not curse uh, Ibn Sina in a, in a manner whereby you have to reject the Greek thought absolutely. But what he did actually in, in his works, throughout his corpus, uh, Al-Mustasfa, who well, actually Islamizing Greek sciences. Logic was not introduced in our fiqh until our Imam Shafi'i for that matter, Risala from her Risala, and also later on developed by uh, Al-Ghazali, Al-Amidi, and many other uh, jurists who, who made use of this Greek heritage. Isaguji, we learn in Turkey. 
It's a good thing. The book of Mantik, uh, logic, uh, for all religious students. So I believe it, we do not need to be secular to, to advance our sciences. Uh, that's our main, I think, clear position. Uh, secondly, is about the idea of history. Some scholars say that the idea of history, history in Islam is regressive because the, pro, the hadith of the Prophet, Khaydul uh, Qur'an, Qarni, and then you know the best of it. But some also view like Al Ghazali and also, uh, and if you were to read Ibn Sunan uh, Abi Dawud, the first hadith in the Kitabul Malahim, the first the book on trials and fitna, the end of times, is the book on Tajdi, uh, the uh, hadith on Tajdi. Those who got uh, uh, Prophet said Allah will send a generation or a group that will renew the Majadidu Laha Dina. Those who renew the religion. In that sense, it's psych cyclical. So maybe I would say the philosophy of Islamic history is combination of regressive and cyclical. Mm -hmm. Are you in the argument that the ism of uh, Islam is the ultimate panacea to address the pitfalls, water use, or vulnerabilities of the ism of the of a secular man? Ism. Um, the ultimate panacea to address the... Well, we cannot, okay, in one hand we can say that I, I, would, not, I, I would not like to generalize in, in that manner, in the sense that Islam is fixed, uh, Islam is conceived as an object that could become a panacea, as you say, as a medicine to, for, for all social ills. Ideally, of course, but you have to, to, to make, to, as I said, Islam it's not an object. It must be, for that to take into effect as a panacea, it must be through the process of Islamization. And those process of, now this process of Islamization is being conducted by all conscious and pious Muslims, especially the scholars, because they are the vanguard of, of religion. Through their works, through their da'wah, this uh, panacea became a medicine to, to, the, to the social ills of the, well, to all people in this world. It has been proven in history. I mean, uh, the Turks, they were uh, very much uh, nomads in, in Central Asia. When they embraced Islam, they became em empire. They derived the source of their strength from Islam. I mean, this is a, 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 there's a causality in that. So that's my, my answer. It's not an ideal, but it's, it's a process. Okay. Uh, they have. Thanks to uh, Mr. Sh